Lord have mercy. Look at the kinfolk. Look at the kinfolk. <laughs> How you folks doing this evening? Boy, it's mighty glad to see you. Mighty good to see you. Well, I'm mighty glad too, though. <laughs> well, we got Casey and Tiffany. Welcome, sisters. I bless and have you with us. And we got Snow Leopard and uh, and then you know we got Queen. Like I said, boy, we got some good folks in here. We got Tina and Jana. How you doing, sister? Snow Leopard, always a blessing to have you with us, brother. And there's Tony. How you doing, sister? And then there's awesome sister, Joni. Yeah, buddy. I'll tell you what. We got the best family in here. On YouTube, that's for sure. Frank, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. There's Debbie. How you doing, sister? There's Joanne and Danny. How you folks doing? Good to see you. Oh, me. Spooky Appalachia. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? <laughs> Alligator horse. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. And then we got Miss Julie. How you doing, sister? It's a blessing to have you with us. And then there's Laura. How you doing? Hey, E.T. How you doing, brother? Hope everything's going good your way. And we got Miss Starla. And then there's LeBron. How you doing, brother? Who is also my pen link for tonight. Who does some mighty good videos, folks. So if you don't have a LeBron fat, be sure and head over there and grab him up. Show him some love and support. And we got Suburban Hillbilly. How you doing, sister? Mama T, always a blessing to have you with us. And then our Sherry. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, sitting, whittling, chewing, and spitting. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Oki, how you doing? It's a blessing to have you with us. And then there's Hannah, how you doing? And Noah, how you doing, brother? Andrea and Sarah, how you doing? Welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, buddy. There's the P.O. box right there if anybody uh, will send, send anything. There's Dead Punk. How you doing, Ken Folk? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Casey, having a good night. I really am. Hope you are, too. That's for sure. Hey, Cheryl. How you doing, sister? Oh, there's Donnie come sneaking in on us. <laughs> how you doing, Donnie? Good to see you, brother. And then there's Miss Florina. How you doing, sister? Good mm -hmm. to see you. And Vodka. Always a blessing. Oh, have mercy, like I said. So good to see you, you good folks. So good to see you. I got some stories. Uh, I want to tell you some good old Hank stories. Uh, but I got one. Uh, I want to tell you, I've been thinking about it all evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I want to tell you. And uh, it ain't got nothing to do with Hanks, but I got to tell you. It's, it's about kids logic. All right. <laughs> about young. Now, most of you know is, I, you know, I like doing wood carving and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, you just can't argue with young as logic. Well. Uh, I sent out there, and I sent him, you know, whittling, doing my thing, stuff, and do a little carving. Hey, Dom, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. And, uh, well, always, I was out there, everything is young, and one of the neighbors of the youngins come up. He sat down beside me, looking at me, said, What are you doing? I said, I'm doing a little wood carving. Well, he got him, he went and got him a little old stick and got him a little butter knife. And, uh, he sat there, and he's a, uh, Scrape around on his stick, you know, and stuff and everything. And I tell him, oh, he's doing a good job, you know, and everything. He'd grin, stick his chest out, you know. He was mighty proud. Well, we sat there for a few minutes. He kept watching me, and he'd look at his stick, you know. He'd look at me, and then look at his, you know. Well, after a minute, he put it down and took off. 
or thing. Well, he come back out of the house, the neighbor's house over there. He come back out with a big old knife. I said, oh, you better go back in there, you, you know, and, you know, let your granddaddy know I don't think they want you to have that. I said, you, you got to go ask for that and everything. He said, oh, I can't do that. I said, well, why not? He said, well, because they'll tell me no. <laughs> Lord, that tickled me something awful. Hey, Peachy, how you doing, sister? Good to see you. And there's Christina, my awesome little sister. How you doing? Like I said, well, like I said, that tickled me something off. Well, Lord have mercy. Like I said, you just you just can't argue with kids' logic. <laughs> now, like I said, uh, speaking of uh, spooky Appalachia, all right, uh, Me and uh, me and old Jimmy there, we uh, did a couple videos this morning, collabed with four years over on his channel. And folks, let me tell you, you ain't going to be disappointed. Like I said, we had the biggest time over. Like I said, we ain't didn't love we we didn't hardly get nothing done for life. <laughs> Like I said, but like I said, it, it's going to be mighty good, mighty good. And speaking of that, uh, he also sent us in a story. Hey, Al, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. And a blessing to have you. Now, like I said, this comes from Spooky Appalachia. He says, uh, during college, few years after i bought my house and my own lived in a little townhouse with two of my buddies so we were uh in between two elderly people who had passed away on either side of us so i often wondered if this is why some of the things happened so we'd often hear footsteps coming up the steps from the basement at night but nobody would be there said so the door to the basement would just randomly lock at times. See, it was so bad. We kept a key hidden at the top of the steps because of it. See, one evening after work, I'd fallen asleep on the couch watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I remember waking up, not being able to move. Then seeing a dark figure standing in the doorway to my room. See, I couldn't make out any features other than it was just dark and looked like it had a hat on. Then suddenly, I was able to move again. So, boy, that was a terrifying experience. So I got to looking into it a little bit and thought it sounded like sleep paralysis. And I didn't hear about shatter paper or nothing like that or the hat man for another few years. So another odd thing that happened there was one night I was home alone. See, my roommates were twin brothers. So they had gone home for the weekend or something other, I think. So I was asleep. And then about 4 a.m., I started hearing banging at the back door, and the doorknob was rattling. I said, boy, it scared the heck out of me. So I jumped up out of that bed, and grabbed a baseball bat, and went downstairs. When I got to the foot of the stairs, I could see the doorknob jiggling. Then it just stopped. So I turned on the lights and looked out the blinds of the door. Nothing was there. Nobody was in the backyard that led to the deck. So this struck me as extremely off because the backyard was fenced off by a pretty high up fence. And if I remember right, it was about Six foot tall wooden fence. I thought, Lord, that's a mighty good. And thank you so much for sending that in. 
Hey, Susan, how you doing, sister? It's good to see you. Yeah, like I said, that was a pretty wild one right there. And uh, I can relate to that all too well. Florence says she's heard of the hat man. Yeah, I have too. It was pretty wild, ain't it? Uh, before we get into the next story, folks, uh, I'd like to announce that uh, uh, in uh, September, like I said, in September is when the Appalachian Project is kicking in. Hey, Danny, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in, hanging out with us. It's a blessing to have you with us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, uh, the Appalachian Project's going to be kicking in. I said, going to be starting in with that. And, uh, I said, can't wait for that. That's going to, that's going to be just, just awesome. And I said, it's where I'm going to be going, uh, you know, the Appalachia and gathering up some old stories and things like that and stuff like that. So. I got a mission for you folks. Like I said, the more my channel's watched and stuff like that and things, you know, the more, you know, the more revenue, money, and stuff, and everything I get to make. So, and everything I make for the next couple of months, like I said, everything's been going toward the Appalachian Project and everything's going to continue to do so. So anything, like I said, and everything is going towards the Appalachian Project. So share me out. Tell him, you know, tell, tell folks about me, you know, chat rooms, you know, friends, family, whatever, you know. The more I'm watching stuff, or the more I'll get to make, and things I get. And, uh, stuff like that. So, like I said, it's gonna be amazing. I'm telling you. But, uh, well, hey, Lee, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. It's a blessing to have you. LeBron said, definitely. I sure appreciate that. Sure appreciate it. But uh, anyhow, like I said, that's enough of jawing. So I guess we're getting us into another story here. Now, this one was sent in to us. Our awesome sister, Jenna. Uh, Steve, I think I did. I'm pretty sure, brother. I'll look here in just a little bit. All right, she says, uh, you're a jury. It says, about every week, said so you make me remember another story I've forgotten. Said, uh, said this here is a story I was passed down from my grandma to me. Well, I can thank you so much for dropping that link, as well as Queen Laura. Yeah, and I say any donations, super chats, anything. I said it's all going for the. Appalachian Project. That way, you know, put it back in there to give you folks some good, good stuff. Hey, Paul. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good to have you with us, brother. He says, uh, my great grandma was a little old bitty gal in the hills of Tennessee during the Civil War. So her daddy and three brothers were all off somewhere fighting. So, it was just her mama, her, and two sisters left at home trying to scratch out a living. Said there was riders always coming to the house, taking whatever food they had, things like that. So, they took to hiding the cow and out in the woods and Stuff like that. Yeah. 
So they do that during the day. And bring it back home, put it in the barn at night. Said they had a couple of hens they found out there in the woods that had got away from the riders and raiders and stuff. And had a scrawny old rooster. Hey, Wayne, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. And my awesome brother, Jaguar. So one year, at Grandma's Christmas, it was cold outside. I mean, mighty, mighty cold. Said they heard a noise coming up from the barn. Said my great great grandma decided it was raiders coming to take the cow. Said she picked up a stick, you know, stove wood, went to defend what was hers. Well, what she found was three half starved Confederate soldiers who had gotten lost from the last battle near their house. She ran in the house and told her mama what she found. So the mama told her, she said, bring them boys in here and she'd feed them. Because, folks, that's one thing I can tell you back in. Folks know how much, uh, you know, hard times fo other folks had and things like that. And, you know, just the Christian things to do like that. It was, you know, Back in, if, uh, even if folks didn't like somebody else, by George, they'd sure feed them. But anyhow, she said, well, they didn't have much because the Raiders already took about everything they'd had and leave them to starve. Well, I said, what they wouldn't take was field peas and sweet taters and things like that because they didn't think that was any good for anything. Now, her mama had a little bit of flour and a little dab of cornmeal and stuff and that she kept in a little old bag that she had sewn into her skirts to keep them hidden. That says she told the boys that she didn't have much, but what they did have, she'd share. Yeah, I said they sat there and said she cooked them up a mess of sweet taters and filled peas, cornbread, and a little dab of milk. See, it's probably more than them boys had put in their mouth in a mighty long time. See, one of the soldier boys pulled out a small pack of cooking cocoa. Said he'd taken off a Yankee soldier. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I said he asked my great 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 grandma. Said if she can make something with it, yes, you know, like tea or something like that for the little ones. Something other like that. Said she had a little bit of sugar. You know, I'm, said that, you know. She kept that into her skirts and everything. Well, I said she mixed that cocoa and that little bit, little bit of sugar in a little bit of hot water. Yeah, brother, sorry. My allergies are getting to me. <laughs> well, I said she mixed it with the milk. Said they had leftovers from that eating, making you know, milking and stuff like that. Well, I said she made a little bit of hot chocolate, you know, to warm up for everybody. Well, she told the soldiers that they could sleep in front of the fireplace, but better not try anything. Well, said the next morning, said the soldiers was gone. By the time they woke up.
Well, I said many, many months went by. And said her daddy and one brother returned from the war. So one brother died in battle. Another died in a Yankee prison camp up north. But another young man showed up with his hat in his hand. Said he was asking for the young lady who threatened him with a piece of stove wood so many months ago. Yeah, so many months ago. Well, said it turned out it was a soldier who took the chocolate off the Yankee soldier and provided them with the sweet tea. So that young couple said would marry months down the line and make their way from the hills of Tennessee to Missouri and finally to the Ozarks, Arkansas. Said so they'd bring into the world nine young'uns, and one of them would be my great-grandma Jane. So she'd pass that story down to her daughter, my grandma, who would, you know, pass it on to me, make the same hot chocolate for me. So I, in turn, make that for hot chocolate for my grandbabies and tell them the story of how our family line came to be because of the stars and soldier and some cocoa that was stolen off a of Yankee soldier. And I thought, Lord, that's a mighty good one right there. And that one ain't story, like I said, but I wanted to put that in there because I just love any kind of history and old stories, and I know you do too. But now here's another old Hank story. Uh, said, uh, back a long time ago, said there was this little old lady, lived by herself, way back in the woods. You know, I mean way back in the hills. And now this was just before the breakout of the Civil War. Well, they said it weren't long. Said, bless her heart. Said she started going downhill. Started ailing. Said it weren't, you know, it weren't too awful long that her, her, her husband passed, you know. And then she left there all by herself. But said she didn't give up. No, sir. We didn't give up at all. Said, if anything, that just made her stronger, you know. Well, said she got to be a real old woman, you know. Well, by that time, the Civil War had been broke out. And said that, uh, uh, she sat there and said a lot of times, you know, said they, they said she sat there and talked about hearing gun fire and stuff like that. She's going cannon fire and stuff like that. And, uh, well, said one evening, she was sitting there and said she had an old dog. I reckon they said that old dog was pretty near the old as she was. Hey, Nana, welcome. It's a blessing to have you with us, sister. They said that old dog was old as she was. Well, anyhow, said she was sitting there, sitting way back in the mountains there, had her old fire going in the fireplace there. Had her old rocking chair scooted up toward the hearth to stay warm. Well, I said they sit there and said, all of a sudden, said the old dog lifted his ears. He looked over at the door. Now, where she where she lived at? Hey, little dog, how you doing? Good to see you. So where she lived at? Said that her uh, her house there set on the side of a hill, like said it was kind of slanted, like you know. Well, said the old dog kept going to the door, you know. Said she. Got up, said she had her an old walking stick, you know. Said she eased over her, you know, and went to the door and said, Who's there? Said, uh, I said, No, you know, weren't no, weren't no answer. She said, I know somebody's there now. Don't you, you know, don't lie to me. So, who's there? Well, I said, They never answered. 
Well, so then she started getting aggravated. So she went over there and got her old cast iron skillet. Went over there, unbolted the door, and went out. You folks may not think it's a Hank story, but just keep listening. Well, so she went out. So she got out there looking around, nothing. Well, said that old dog, so as soon as it went out, said he circled around the, uh, around the house. And said, as soon as he went around the house, he went around around back. Because down there in the bottom, she had an old root cellar down there. Well, said she went around there and everything, you know, had her old skillet in her hand. And said, who's in there? Come on out of there now. Well, so all of a sudden she heard, don't hurt me, ma'am. I, I ain't here to hurt you. So, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't hurt you for nothing. So she grabbed that old cast iron skill and said, oh, I know you ain't going to hurt me. Come on out of there. And, uh, said, uh, well, said, all of a sudden, so there's a man come crawling out of there and he was in chains. He was an African-American. He was a slave. Said he had escaped. He run away. Said she told him, said, you run away, ain't you? Said he said, yes, am She said, well, what's your name? So he told her, said his name was Joe. She said, well, said, uh, said, well, why you, where you, where you running from, Joe? Well, I said he told her, said, it was, you know, a couple of areas over. He said, I believe they lost me for a little while anyway. I said, they after me. He said, but ma'am, I'm starving to death. Well, I said, she told him, said, well, Joe, you come on in the house here. I said, we'll make you a bite to eat. She said, then you're going to have to be on your way. She said, you know what they'll do to both of us. So he said, yes, ma'am, I know, I understand, but God bless you for that. Well, I said, they went in there. And again, kind of like in Janet's story, said she had a little old handful of cornmeal little bit of flour and stuff like that, you know. And she told him to stoke the fire up, you know, real big. And uh, keep an eye out and stuff and everything. Well, I said she made him up some cornbread and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, made him up a little bite to eat. Well, I said while he was eating, said the poor old fella had to eat like, you know, he, he starved to death, you know, and actually probably was. Bless his heart. Well, said that uh, after that, said they went over there and uh, see, uh, you know, just scarfing it down. Well, I said while he was doing that, she was making more. And said he asked her, said, ma'am, what are you doing? She said, there ain't no way I'm going to let you take out of here empty-handed. Said God guided you to me for a reason. Well, said that uh, after that, it says she, you know, she fixed him up a little dab, you know, a little bite and stuff and everything. And says she got him and told him, said, "Come on now." And uh, oh, it's all right, Mary, and bless your heart for coming in, sister. It's good to see you. So he said, "Come on now." Well, she said she got him, and it was all she could do. But said she got down on her knees with him and said they prayed. Well, said uh, after that, said she uh, had an old like flintlock pistol or something like that, and she gave it to him. And he said, ma'am, you're going to need this more than me. She said, no, sir, you go ahead and you take it. Well, said he grabbed it and everything and said he gave her a big old hug, thanked her, and took off. And, uh, well, said he got took off stuff and everything and said it weren't long. Hey, Crow, how you doing, brother? Said it weren't long. Said they heard, uh, the next morning, said they heard, you know, all kinds of commotion and stuff and everything while she was going into town. She heard her old dog, you know. And said they told her, said, you hear about what happened? She said, no. What happened? And apparently, they said they had called up, called up to old Joe and sadly took his life. Well, 
said that just just ate her up boy said just you know made her mad and broke her heart at the same time because she, <clears throat> she knowed what kind of you know person he was said he was a mighty good person you know said that just broke her heart said she just sat around moat for days well said after that said it weren't long at all weren't long at all after that said some weird things start happening around the whole cabin. Said all of a sudden one night, said she was asleep her and said old dog. Said that old dog woke her up, you know, jumping up on the bed. Said he'd jump up on the bed and then hop down. Jump up on the bed and hop down. Well, said she asked him, you know, what's going on? What is it? What is it? And said he'd just whine a little bit. Well, about that time, Said her old pots and, you know, pan stuff and everything start clanking together. Well, said at first she thought somebody had come in on her. Everything. Said she, you know, got them looking around, but didn't see nobody. Well, said she got up there, you know, didn't see nothing. So, said she'd lay back down. It weren't long and do it again. Well, said one time it come up big old snow. So probably, you know, five, six inches of snow, you know. Well, said she got up one morning early, you know. She got up, went out on the porch where she had her wood and kindling stacked up out there and stuff. And said that they was footprints that walked up to the, uh, up there to uh, where the wood and stuff was at. Says she thought, well, now who in the world would have been here? You know, because since she lived so far back in there, it was unreal, you know. Well, I said, she got up there and got to look around. Says she just brushed it off after a little bit. Well, so after that, she's sitting there and said she'd feel a cold breeze just circle around her. Said, you know, she'd shift her a little bit and everything. She, she can get her old blanket and throw around her or something, does, you know, go on about her business. Well, said, why not long after that? Said she'd be sitting there asleep. And said it would feel like somebody would grab her by her big toe and shake her foot. Said that just, you know, <laughs> made her a little uneasy. Well, I said, she finally leaned up and everything. I said, who are you? I said, I know what kind of, you know, I said, I know you ain't, but you ain't scaring me off. You ain't scaring me out of here a bit. I said, who are you? Well, I said, nothing was ever said. But said she heard chains. Well, I said, as soon as she heard them chains, I said she knowed exactly who it was. I said she knowed it was Joe. She, she said, I said, I, Joe, is that you? I said, I know that's you. I know it is. Well, I said, about that time she said that. I said, that cold wind that was blowing around her. I said, it stopped. I said, it just got real warm in there. And I thought, Lord. Well, not long after that, rumors and stuff started going around and said that she was rich. Yeah, I said she was rich and had all kinds of stuff, you know, gold and, you know, money and stuff hidden up under the floorboards of her old house. Well, they said that a bunch of old fellas got together one night, a bunch of drunks and stuff, and said they was going to go up there and just take it. So they went up there, planning on just going in there and just, you know, just ripping up the floorboards and just, so if they had to, said they'd just push her down, tie her up somewhere. Well, I said them men said that they got through there. Well, I said she was laying there in bed one night. I said the old dog commenced to growl again. Well, I said as soon as that happened, I said she got up. I said all of a sudden, I said she heard, I said she heard men screaming and hollering. Top of their lungs. Well. Said she, uh, 
you know, lit an old lantern, went out there on the porch, went out there and got to look and said, the old dog said, he'd go out there and look and stuff. Said, you hear him in a hollering going out off down the holler there. And I said, she got to looking around and said, they was footprint of probably five or six people, you know, something like that, that had come out of the woods and up toward the cabin in that snow, you know. But she said the odd thing was she was the only one there and she was in bed. But said there was a big old set of footprints that started halfway across the porch and walked out there and met them. She knowed deep in her heart it was Joel protecting her. Well, I said after that, I said he got the room, you know, the rumor got around, said the place was haunted, she was a witch and all that. Well, then after that, I said somebody thought, well, they'd just wait till she was gone and go in there and get it. They thought, well, sure enough, they caught her going into town one time. Then here they went. Said they got up there and one fella later on, one of the fellas that went with them that was going to help them told, said he went up there. Said here they went. Said they got up there and said they, you know, said the old cabin come in the side. Said they got to going up there and everything. Said as they got closer to the house, Said all of them started getting an eerie feeling like they's being watched. Well, said as they got a little bit closer, said they started hearing footsteps, you know, like something was running up to them. But said they jump and jerk around, turn around stuff, nothing. And said it just they just didn't know what to do. Well, I said that uh Hey Bear, how you doing, brother? Well, said that it scared them half to death, you know, but they thought, well, you know, so they told them, hold on, boys, now we come here to do something, now we're going to do it. Well, said they got up there, and uh, so they got up there, one of them just kicked the door open. So as soon as he kicked that door open, they said that there was this scream that come through the house. And said that scream surrounded them and said that when that happened said that scream was so scary so there was one of the men that was with them said it scared him so bad so today was a big old white streak showed up in his hair well said they turned around took off running said they run so fast said they passed her on the path going home well Said that when they pastor said they went plumb on the other side of the path and was all the way in the edge of the woods line, the pastor and stuff and everything else. Well, I said she thought, Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, they've done something to my house. Well, I said she took off fast as she can go, bless her heart. Well, I said she got to going up through there and everything. Well, I said as soon as she got up there, I said the only thing she saw was the door had been busted open. Well, so she went there and said she just knowed with all her heart that again, Joe had protected her. Well, I said that she went back to her closest neighbor and had them come back out and help her fashion out a door. And then, said after that, she said it weren't too awful long, she passed away, sadly. Well, after that, they said that old house sat there and said it just sat there till it just fell in on itself. Hey, Scully, how you doing, brother? And they said that it was so strange. They said even after the poor old thing passed away, said that a lot of people had got the land after that. And said that they'd go up there, going to, you know, knock it down or something, or, you know, to, you know, put up a better house or build a better house, somewhere like that. And said every time that would happen, said that they'd always start hearing some weird and crazy things that would always scare them away. 
said a lot of them were have nightmares. I mean, just all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff would happen. You know, they would tell them, you know, nightmares. They would, you know, tell them to leave it alone, and they would. So that old house sat there till it was just a piece of rubble on the ground. And like I said, I remember hearing that story ever since I was a young. But you know, that's just that just just goes to show you right there. I mean, poor old Joe, bless his heart. You could tell he, you know, he had a mighty good heart and spirit. But also just goes to show you how far somebody will go when somebody else shows them a little act of kindness. And I thought that was a mighty good one. Now, Marcia says, we seen a man in a long black trench coat come down the stairs and then shoot back up him. It didn't bother me. Well, Lord, I'd have to have me some new britches. <laughs> That's for sure right there. Lord of mercy. Here's one. I also remember from my family. Hey, Bear, like I said, I sure do appreciate you folks coming in and hanging out with us. Like I said, folks, old Big Bear's family, like I said, they're some mighty good folks. Like I said, if you ain't got them, be sure and grab them up. Um, I'm doing good, sister. Like I said, uh, hey, you can send them to my email. I, I said, I'll be sure to uh, read them. I know folks would enjoy them as much as I would. Oh, yeah. Here's one. Like I said, I'll tell you. Hang on a minute. Just a second. There he is. Batty, how you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. Um, now, this one. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. Bless your heart, sister. So glad you are enjoying them. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jimmy, I appreciate that. Uh, well, now... Back a long time ago, like I said, when me and Lori first got together and stuff and everything, she lived, uh, like I said, with her mama in a little trailer. Like I said, it was a single wide, but her daddy had built onto it. And it, uh, I said, it, it was haunted, boy. I mean, haunted. And, uh, Hey, Derek, I appreciate that, brother. <clears throat> and, uh, like I said, it, it was haunted. But she believed after, after later, a little bit later on, she figured out why. Well, like I said, she told me that it was haunted, but I, I thought, oh, okay, you know. Like I said, I was used to, you know, my old house, old, you know, the old cabin. We heard a lot of stuff there, too. And I thought, well, okay. So, I went over there once, and uh, we sat in there and stuff, you know. And all of a sudden, it never failed. Whenever she would go uh, up toward the door of her bedroom, they would be running down the little hall. You'd hear the footsteps and everything. Like I said, it, you'd hear, you know, hear it running down the hall, and it would slam into that door and fly open and hit her. And I seen that with, like I said, I witnessed that with my own two eyes. I thought, Lord. She said, now, what do you think about that? I said, I think we're getting out of here. <laughs> I said, that's what I think. And I tell you folks what's the truth. Uh, after that, me and her got to talking. And, uh, you know, we, you know, talking about this and that and the other. And she told me, she said, uh, one time, said back when she was a lot younger, said that she uh, went walking one evening. Said it was getting kind of late, you know, and stuff in the evening. Still daylight, but just kind of late in the evening. And, uh, well, said that uh, she got to walking and went to a place behind an old cemetery, a little patch of woods. And said there was an old building in there. It's almost like a little shed, like. Said it's old falling in stuff kind of you know 
Well, says she went in there, says she eased the door back, you know, had a little wooden door on it. Says she eased that door back, looked in. Said when she did, said there was a big old table sitting there. And said it had candles. She said, but the strange thing was, she said you could smell that, you know, like when you blow a candle out, you know. Said you could smell that strong. And she said there was an old book there that was open. She said she didn't bother going over there bothering with it. She said, but she could just tell by the vibes, you know, the energy that was coming off that old thing, that it weren't good. Whatever it was, it was not good. And said there was scratchings all over the walls and stuff and everything, you know. I thought, Lord have mercy. Well, so as soon as she seen that, said she turned around and said it just said she just turned around and just you know, she, you know, run back to the house as fast as she could. And said then after she got home, said that's when it really spooked her. Said cause she thought, you know, smelling them old candles like that, they probably know what I was coming. There's probably somebody there, and was probably watching her the whole time. And said after that, said it weren't long. So that's when it really kicked into overdrive. And she said that they would come in there. So they'd be, she'd see all kind of lights and stuff above her, like the little crack just above the bedroom door there, you know, where your door shuts. So they'd be a light just at the top of it. And said at first, now this was just her and her mom and daddy living there. And said at first, she thought it was her mom and her daddy or something or other. I uh, said, one night she saw it, said she jumped up, and yanked, you know, yanked the door open, looked out, nothing. Said she thought, Lord have mercy. Well, said one evening she laying there, said she laying there watching TV. And said that, uh, uh, Says she's laying there, and it felt like some had just re re uh, reached down there and grabbed a handful of her hair and yanked. And says she had her headphones on, and uh, said as soon as that happened, says she jumped up. Nothing. Well, said that. Uh, that, you know, said she went and talked to her mom about it and said her mom told her, said, oh, there ain't no such thing. It's, it's, it's all in your head. So she said, no, mama, it ain't neither. So, you know, I said, I know exactly what I've been hearing, what I've been seeing. She said, no, you're just, it's just in your imagination. And boy, I tell you what, that's something that just eats my crawl right there is when folks tell their youngins that, which I know sometimes, you know, they tell them that. So they won't get as scared because sometimes, you know, you, you some people that you just can't afford to move or nothing. But when they, there is a point to where folks need to say, I believe you, you know, and it's, I said, there was just so much that went on around there. Hey, Genevieve, how you doing? Thanks so much for coming in, hanging out with us. And, uh, it was, it was just crazy. Hey, Farkas, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. And also visiting the dead. How you doing, brother? Uh, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, it, like I said, it, 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 there's just so much that went on there. And it's like I told her, I said, I'll tell you what's, what's truth. Hey, Landsman, how you doing, brother? And Derek, how you doing? Always good to see you, brother. And uh, said that, uh, I told her, I said, I, I'd almost lay money on it. I said, whatever was going on in that shed had something to do with that. I said, I'd almost lay money on it. Hey, Randall, how you doing, brother? And like I said, it's just, 
so crazy. She said, yep. Yeah. She said, was told that, so I had to learn to deal with that all by myself, 12 years old. I thought, Lord. <clears throat> Genevieve says, hello, everybody. I said, this is the first live I've been able to catch, but sure do like y'all's content. Right up my alley. Or right down my pigtail. <laughs> well, you sure fit right in here, and welcome to the family. <laughs> it's a blessing to have you with us. Oh, mercy me, mercy me. I said, when I was little, I heard kind of a story like this. Oh, Lord, I done messed up. There we go. Sorry about that, E.T. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like I said, there's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, just how stuff like that can happen, where we're at, and things like that. <laughs> and <clears throat> kind of odd, too. Oh, yeah, oh, uh, Noah, that'll be this Sunday, brother. Like I said, send all you want, like I said, because this Sunday is when I'll be a tell them. Yeah, this Sunday will be the uh, Lord, I know the Lord works in mysterious ways, one, folks. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's kind of wild how so many, you know, similar things goes on. And if I'm not badly mistaken, uh, I believe if I'm not, like I said, if I'm not badly mistaken, I believe she says she might've seen the hat man once. And, uh, uh yeah 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 sure enough brother like i said uh I, i'm gonna actually i'm gonna make a video out of that one whole plantation i think of django and candy land yeah yeah that was some that was a good movie weren't it i like how old django got his revenge at the end <laughs> today man he sure does hey john how you doing brother good to see you Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. But, yeah, and something else, too, you know. A lot of folks talks about, you know, the hat man and stuff like that and things, you know. Uh, and I've heard so many people talk about hat man, things like that. And then I've heard so many say that it's just uh, sleep paralysis. So that's all it is. There ain't nothing to that. Uh, Oxable, uh, yeah, we will be, but, uh, it's going to be a little while. I said, right now we're going to be, uh, concentrating on, the, the Appalachian project. Visiting the desk. When I was, uh, when I was little, I was so ugly. My mama used to have tie pork chop around my neck. Just get dogs play with me. <laughs> oh, I know that old feeling all too well. I'm still that ugly. <laughs> Oh, uh, alligator said, I get confused. I answered an email from Spooky and called him Jerry. Well, don't, f don't feel bad. That's been going on all day. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, me and Jimmy, like I said, we doing a collab today. And, uh, on there, Jimmy, I said, well, just, just, just be watching. You guys will see. <laughs> um, and there's Miss Darlene Williams. How you doing, Miss Darlene? Good to see you. Now, folks, the book and the little story I read here that I said the other day, that was from this lady right here. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, it, it, it was, it's unreal. You know, I mean, some folks say that, you know, sleep paralysis is a medical kind of, kind of deal. And I'm not saying that it ain't because I'm sure there is a lot of people that does, you know, have it and it is actually sleep paralysis. But I've often wondered, too, if, you know, there's got to be more to it than that. Because so many people describe the same thing, you know, but it's always a slight bit different. All right, Wayne, get you some rest, brother. God bless you. 
Look forward to seeing what Jerry and Jimmy done cooked up together. Hey, I tell you, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Lord, I ain't never been asleep when I've had it. You've witnessed. Yep, sure enough. Hey, Michael, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. But, yeah, like I said, I don't know. There's just so much to that. I just, I don't know. I can't help but think there's more to it than just that. I get it when I don't use my CPAP. I think someone's breaking in on me. Hey, I'm telling you, brothers, there's more to it than just, just, you know, like, a, you know, sleep, what, they're, what they describe it. They said there's something unnatural ain't there. I wonder if it's people that's kind of sensitive and stuff. Yes, man. So, hey, you're still in business. But like I said, folks, it, it, to me, it's just, I believe that's what it is. Sure enough. Well, anyway, folks, I said, I guess we're going to end it here for tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for blessing me and everybody and each other for coming in, visiting one another and everything. And it's just, it, it's just a blessing to have you, each and every one of you. And I say it each stream, I love you more than anything, probably more than you'll ever know. And it's just a blessing to have you folks here. I mean, it really, truly is. I said, the good Lord, he, uh, he, he guides us all together for a reason. Hey, Paul, glad you made it, brother. We in it, but glad to see you here. And a blessing to have you with us. Uh, yeah, I am going to be uh, reading more of Guarding Angel. I am. I said, I got another stream that's going to be just for that one. Next Wednesday. Tina, so glad you did, sister. Um, but anyway, folks, I said again, I said, I, I'll let you go and quit bending your ear. <laughs> but uh, like I said, just uh, shout me out, share me out, everything else. Uh, I said, let's uh, get this going for the Appalachian Project. Like I said, I'm really excited about that. Hey, Noir. Hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> uh, Thanks so much, Cheryl. Uh, oh, I can't wait for that. Uh, thanks so much for that, E.T. But uh, like I said, thank you folks so much. I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Like I said, show each other some love and support, which I know you do. Cause like I said, because people is what matters in this whole world. And like I said, the Lord has... He... He guides us together all for a reason. Lord Moonshiner. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. A little bit more to go toward the Appalachian Project. Shoot, yeah. <laughs> Another blessing. God bless you for that, brother. You didn't have to do that, but God bless you. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. We love y'all too, Barry. I said, you know, some mighty good folks and kin folk. We love you to death. Uh, you're very welcome, sister. Like I said, I'm going to be reading more of it next Wednesday. Like I said, the whole stream going to be about your book. Uh, yeah, now Shadow's Pass. Like I said, he's uh, just 50 something away from 1K, folks. So, like I said, help him out. Let's help him out there, little dad. <laughs> well, I love you, bunches. God bless you and your kin. And have a good one.